Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our lecture on Urban Climate Fundamentals, which is part of the lecture series on understanding and managing urban heat. In this part of the lecture, we look at essential elements of urban climatology for understanding the urban heat island. My name is Heinke Schlünzen. I'm professor for meteorology at the University of Hamburg in Germany. Before we look into the heat island, we briefly want to repeat how local climate is created. The solar radiation causes temperature gradients on the Earth's surfaces. These result in pressure gradients. The pressure gradients initiate wind. Wind is not homogeneous, not in horizontal direction, but also not in vertical direction, because there is friction at surfaces and this friction results in lower wind speeds close to surfaces and the gradients in the flow cause turbulence, which enhances mixing of, for instance, temperature in horizontal as well as in vertical direction. Plants are an important influence parameter for forming the local climate. Evapotranspiration increases the humidity of the atmosphere, but for evapotranspiration, heat is needed so that temperature is reduced. Once the humidity reaches saturation, clouds are formed and rain and other types of precipitation occur. All these essential elements of the atmosphere and the local climate are not homogeneously distributed, but they differ in the different climate zones. In addition, within a climate zone, water bodies like ocean inlets or lakes, mountains, the different vegetation types like forests or grassland, and the surface specifics influence the local climate as well. Surface specifics are on the one hand the emissivity of long wave radiation from surfaces or the reflectivity of short wave radiation, but also the heat storage capability of the surfaces and the ground. All these elements influence the local climate. When we come to cities, we find the same elements relevant for the local climate as outside. But we have more influences. There is the urban fabric with its very high heat storage ability and the low albedo values. We have a complete new heat source, the anthropogenic heat emissions, resulting from the human activities within urban areas. And we have further anthropogenic emissions like gases and particles emitted into the atmosphere, which change the radiation budget and also can impact cloud formation. All these uptakes of heat and humidity and emission of heat they are not only at the ground, but also at higher levels because the buildings reach heights of a few 10 meters up to a few hundred meters. So that the wind field, for instance, is changed in higher levels, turbulence is created, humidity is reduced in urban areas because of the sealed surfaces, temperatures are impacted and the long wave outgoing radiation as well as the shortwave radiation budget at surfaces. So all in all, the values of wind temperature and humidity in urban areas differ from those of the surrounding values. We now know about the differences in the local climate in rural and more urban areas. Why do we have an urban heat island? This is because the urban fabric is heterogeneous. Cities are more densely built in the center, shown here as the red circle in the center of this figure. 
lower wind speeds result from these more dense built areas and this reduces the heat exchange with the atmosphere. We have, due to the buildings, a larger heat storage and we have, because of the packed inner cities, large anthropogenic heat values. This results in a warmer city center compared to the more natural surroundings and this warmer city center then from bird's eye view looks like an island in the ocean and this is why we name it urban heat island. You might want to know how the heat island is calculated. It's a temperature difference between values of an urban and a close by more natural site. This sounds very, very easy, but it's not so easy as it sounds because you have to make sure that you have the same regional climate in and outside the city. Coming back to that example of water bodies having the same distance from the water body because of local circulations that might take place. Sites also have to have the same altitude above sea level because temperature decreases with height and if you have the temperature values at different heights yeah you will get a temperature difference in the end but a result of height differences and not so much of the urban effect and you have to use the same assessment method meaning the same sensor or the same model when you do this for your city Compare values of, for instance, city center, maybe suburbs and a more rural site, you will come up with an annual cycle, for instance. This is given here, the values for Hamburg at noon or not exactly noon, it's the maximum temperatures we used here for calculating differences and it's not a single day or so, it's a climate average value. You see here that the urban heat island is above zero for January to April about, depends on the place in the city, and October to December. But in the summer months in Hamburg, the temperature is ticking close to zero or it's even below zero as a result of the heat storage in this compact urban material resulting in lower temperatures in the city center compared to outside. This is different at nighttime where you can see in the climate average that the city center has values of the urban heat island of two and a half and three degrees. Be aware that the urban heat island intensity depends on space. Here shown with the two lines for the city center or on the suburban airport and on time, annual cycle, and it depends on height also. This is the canopy layer urban heat island. It's about two meters above ground. But yeah, there are other heat islands also which will be discussed in the next lecture. There is not, the heat island is not the total temperature. You also should be aware of that. That's an add-on. So if we think of an average temperature of something like um, three degrees more in a future climate compared to today, the city center in the summer is something like at least two and a half degrees warmer in addition if the fabric, the urban fabric, is the same as today. Thank you for your attention.